Let's do Tailgate Tuesday. Let's do it. Um, I wanted to bring this up because we are entering fall, foliage, chill in the air, hoodies, quarter zips, and chili. A couple weeks ago, I brought this up on the over-the-top chili and how I'm going to try that at some point. Yep, fan favorite. I wanted to bring this up because I think if you're having viewing parties, like your Ohio State, Penn State, your Michigan, Penn State, Michigan, Ohio State, Spartan fans, there are no viewing parties. You sit alone mumbling to yourself. It's like a visitation. But the chili bar is the way to feed people, keep them happy. But I had a couple of things. There is one ingredient if you're not using in your chili, you are doing it wrong. You're doing it wrong. Do you know what this ingredient is? I have no no idea. It's not a bean or not. It's not a spice. It's not a tomato. It's not a seasoning packet. It is the type of meat you're using. The best chili is made with stew meat. Really? Chuck. The bread, now, not ground beef. That's what I was going to say, ground beef, ground chuck, no? No, 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 no. You don't want any of it. You want the, the... You want the stew meat braised until it is fall apart tender. A true Texas chili using cubed chuck stew meat at your meat counter. Mm-hmm. Brown it. Braise it. Yeah. Then into your chili mixture. Jim, the depth of flavor, the depth of, of beef flavor with the spices, with the time it's spent in that chili mixture braising. It produces something that is so superior to ground beef. Once you try it, you'll never go back. I I don't disagree. I never thought to do it. Like, I mean, I just did what you're talking about when I made my stew a couple weeks ago. And you brown it, you braise it, and throw it in. But I didn't think to do it with a chili. It is next level. I'm not a stickler on how you like your chili. It's subjective. Sure. Some people what are I don't heavy like, on the beans. I don't like chili that's super spicy because that's just only going to make you sick. Um, not big on the chicken chili, the white bean no, chili. No, the, no, no, the, no. I like not the hearty, the red. And if you're going to make chili, I can't do ground turkey because you're waste, it's a waste of time. Either do it with the beef or don't. Okay. Tell you the other thing I don't like. What? You can keep your bread bowl. Don't need it. You I mean like... Um, I don't get people's obsession with bread bowls. When I used to run a big tailgate, everybody wanted the fucking bread bowls for the chili deal. And I'm like, well, why am I bringing 20 bread bowls? This is ridiculous. Just eat it out of a bowl. If you want a piece of bread that bad, I'll bring a loaf of bread. I don't like the, the bread bowl. I don't understand the bread bowl. It's not, like, we're adults. It's not messy to eat with, but it is more awkward to eat out of a bread bowl. Right? Yes. I'm just telling you. Braise your stew meat. Okay. I'm big putting beer in my chili. Okay. Um, and and keep the bread bowl. Now, here's the question. Toppings bar for the chili bar for a viewing party. Okay. Mandatory. What are the mandatories for you? You got to have some cheese, right? We're doing cheddar. We're doing cheddar. Colby Jack. Cheddar. I like a Colby Jack, but I think with a chili, it's a cheddar. Ch- I would agree with you. Okay. Next. Uh, I like, well, your onion's already in your chili, but you can top it a little onion. Love raw onion. Yes. Love. Um, pickled jalapeno. Eh, not my, not my thing. Okay, I, I like the pickled rather than the raw because the raw can be incendiary to pickle. Sure, it's a nice bite. Sour cream slash Greek yogurt depends if you're trying to keep it healthy or not. Mm-hmm. But but some form yeah, of topper a, there. Yeah. What about like a green onion? Indifferent. Okay. I think green onions. Are I like just, green onion. Whether green it's onions like an, uh, are all sizzle no steak. They're just there to look pretty. I think they give a little bit of a okay. crunch. And they're not, I like like the raw onion, but this is kind of the, um, I'll tell the compromise the, for people who don't like a raw onion is a green onion. Yes. The key for me at the chili bar, because I don't want to make the chili overly spicy, there has to be a bite, but I, I don't understand where people get the rocks off killing their guests. Tabasco sidecar. I think Tabasco adds a beautiful flavor what do you mean, side to car? chili. Like your just the little bottle. Oh, bing, okay. bing, okay. bing, bing, in a little to taste. Little side car. Every spice is different. I love it. What else? My beans name. or no beans? Preferences, no beans. The, really? tex- the Texas chili is a no beans yeah. chili. I, I prefer that. You struck me as a Midwestern fake chili guy. Well, I don't think beans in a chili are fake. Well, they're not real. But preference would be no beans, but I'm not going to turn away a bowl of chili that's got beans in it. Are you big on the peppers in a chili? A green bell, a red bell. I think you're getting more like goulashy at that point. How dare you? 
Oh my. I like green peppers. Okay. We did the pizza topping episode. I again, I throw them in. You're you're already foreshadowing Saturday night. You want pizza, don't you? We don't have to do pizza. What do you want? Lobster tails? What do I gotta do for the Saturday show for a service? What do we gotta do? What do you want? Like a shrimp scampi and question. lobster tail. Yeah. Like, do you want my wife uh, getting you some Ocetra caviar? Like, what do we do? <laughs> what, what do I need Only to have? Your for you? finest. Yeah. What do you want? You want a little bottle of champagne Saturday night? What can there I do for go. you? <laughs> How, would you like to toast to the end of your program? Is that what you want? Uh, pro, that'll be who they hire. Whoever they hire, it's either going to be the beginning of something exciting or the end of uh, whatever it is. Do you feel like, I know part of you says burn this down. Mm. Do you feel like part of it does set you a little further back to if they flatline? Like, isn't it a better situation for the next coach if they were to say, win a couple games at the end of the year? Maybe Hauser is decent and you have something to Old work school, with? Old school, I'd say yes. With the new school, anyone who fires their coach, you're basically losing 40 players. Yeah. You're raiding the portal. You're turning the roster over. You're you're going into the portal and finding these ready-made quarterbacks. I don't think but it's you nearly as damaging. You want something redeemable for the next who? guy, right? Who, though? Player-wise? I mean, yeah, who? A, a, uh, I don't a, want to do a deep dive on state's know, roster, but, but there's but basically... would you feel better if there were like four, four or five guys on the team that you were like, hey, they're coming back. We have some stability. Okay, they can be the face of but something. But why can't both be true? They can be, but like when you say burn it down, like I'm picturing, like you said 52 to 3. Whatever. Wouldn't it behoove you to have Kate Hauser throw a couple touchdowns? Maybe it's not in the cards against Michigan, but a couple touchdowns each week. Here's and you go, my hey, argument. He can be our okay. leader and, and usher well, in. Well, the, the better next. he plays, he leaves. <laughs> Boy, I want to fight with you, but you're not wrong. Like that is kind of the debilitating position of today's if college you, football. If you had contracts. How about good, but not too good? Okay. Throws for like 220 yards. If you had contracts, I would agree with everything you're saying yeah. because I know some of my roster returning like the NFL. And it's tone setters. My argument is the better a kid is now, all he's going to do is go hostage situation with the new coach or the kids are already getting contacted in the portal now. I've learned not to care. I can't care. We got a kid right now that I think is a high character kid, a high quality kid, and a really good football player. He's a kid named Jordan Hall. Yeah. He starts a middle linebacker for us, and he's a freshman. A fucking freshman. Pedigree. Four-star, mm -hmm. top 250 kid, IMG Academy. Legit, mm -hmm. right? I can't get invested because if I'm Jordan and I'm his family and I'm from Florida, you know he's getting calls from yeah. FSU and UF and Miami or Bama, whatever it is. Guess what? Kid, you got to do what's best for you. But I'm doing what's best for me as a fan. I'm not going to care. Because what's what's but the it's point? Sad. Like I mean, college. I know for you and for a lot of fans, me too. It's a more passion driven sure. game than the NFL. Sure, Nobody it disputes was. The quality of the play is better at the NFL, but college is passion. Like I thought, it used or, to be. Oregon Washington is everything the sport is and can be. The Two top, teams that hate each other, clash the of top styles. Top ten games yeah. still have that. Yeah, but if you're not in the top ten or starting next year, it'll be the top twelve for that playoff. Yeah, but it's more than twelve because it's teams fighting to get okay, into so twelve. So it's you're... twenty-four to twenty-five teams. Okay, but if you're not there, you're nowhere. It used to but be, but it's not unattainable to get to the top twenty-five. Right, but I'm saying it used to be. Hey, we're playing for a bowl. Hey, we're playing for a better bowl. Hey, we're trying for a New Year's bowl. All that's gone. You're correct. If you don't make the playoff, what are you playing for? Playing for next year's playoff. I mean, that's the way the sport. But the problem is no momentum now, because now your season ends. Hold on, FSU is a great example of momentum. Okay, that's a team that built off a ten-win team a year ago and is now chasing a national championship. Right, but they won ten games last year. Correct. My point to you is, if you're not in the elite, you don't even know who's coming back to your team. So what is there for me to invest in? Look, it's more than a punchline. I hate the idea I can't watch Michigan, Michigan State this year because it's a void. Mm -hmm. I want Michigan to embarrass them. I, I, I hope Michigan flips off our crowd. I don't care. Do whatever you want to do. Fuck it. Bring They're your wife and kids and have a great time. Yeah, because, again, preseason, <laughs> I said it. I wouldn't I wouldn't go there if I was a Wolverine. I thought this year's edition of the game was going to be pretty heated and nasty. Then Mel Tucker decided to have hotel endeavors, and you know it's not the same. Well, now I'd say, fuck it, bring the whole family because there won't be any Spartans there. Mm -hmm. Bring I, your second cousins. I don't know a single Spartan is going. Don't know anyone going. We're gonna is do it going to be like uh, Ann Arbor North? Yes. I would say it would be a 50-50 split Saturday. And on one hand, I was going to ask you, like, isn't that embarrassing? But I think yeah. you want it. I you do. You want that really badly. 
I do. You want to send that message. I want to send the message to the donors who have their head so far up their ass that they think it'll all be okay if they just make a responsible hire. This needs to be all hands on deck. The ship is going down. What the fuck are we going to do about it? We either get bold, dream bigger, and make an inspired hire. And how do you do that in today's world? Not just Money. paying the coach. <laughs> it's having a legitimate NIL collective with a long-term prognosis on commitments. Not some bullshit website that sells pictures of dogs and has 50 people involved. Okay? It has to be a collective where I go to a coach and I, hey, I go to Kalen DeBoer at UW and I go, you're making six and a half, here's 10, plus a $12 million a year commitment over the next three years to an NIL collective for you to go get the players you need to bring us back from the abyss. They don't have that. Do you realize how quickly things changed? And then we can wrap up Spartan Radio We're fine. Here. I don't care. When they hired Mel Tucker, Michigan State made a big financial commitment. They stole a coach from a Power 5 school, and the caveat was, here's money for your assistant coaches. See, that used to be the thing you did. Mm -hmm. You found money for the coach's assistants so we could hire the best. Right. Now, I would argue, while well, that matters and you still need to fund the assistant coaching pool, it has to be comma- and right. here's the money earmarked for you to round out the roster. To buy players. Yes. Right. Now, and again, MSU has the facilities. Mm -hmm. They just built a brand new football building. You know, thanks, Mel. Big you don't 10 revenue is coming. Yeah. So, Jim, you show me. Your program shouldn't be left for dead is my point. Yeah, but there's nothing I can do about it. I know. So, therefore, I don't care. I do this podcast. I care about who I bet on. You know who my favorite team is? Whoever I bet. I don't care anymore. Thursday, we get new favorite teams. Friday, even more. Great work by you. Congratulations on the envelope. Let's party. Let's do it. Saturday, I got a chauffeur. This is going to be awesome. <laughs> That's Cash the Ticket. We'll talk to you guys on Thursday.